What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in today's video, I wanted to go through some navigation and camera tips that can save you a lot of time when working, working in SketchUp. Um, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I created to give you a start to finish training on SketchUp. So if you want to take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, I think camera views and navigation are things that people kind of skip over and they kind of take for granted. And I think there's something that can really save you time um, working with these. So these are going to be tips that I think are going to um, basically save you time and help you move around your model more quickly. So for model credit, this is the Beach House by SZ Kristoff. This is a great house model for kind of uh, being able to navigate around both the outside and the inside of the house. So tip number one is to save your different camera views. I've talked about this before, but you can waste a lot of time finding a view that you like and then not saving it. So in order to save it, you're just gonna go up to view, animation, you're going to click add scene. And so what that's going to do is that's going to pop up a tab over here where you can navigate back to this view. So your camera properties and everything else from that time is going to be saved right here. So if you have a bunch of different views you're using of like different sides of the building or something like that, you're going to want to add those in so that you don't have to keep navigating back and finding the same views. And this can get especially important when you start getting into tight spaces and you're creating views that uh, really kind of show what you want within SketchUp. So like let's say for example I wanted an interior camera view. You can see I had to kind of fly in here and uh, move around in order to make that work. Well you're going to want to save a copy of that view and in this case I'm just right clicking on the scene that's in here and I'm just clicking add to add a new scene so that you can get back to that really quickly. So that's my first tip. The second tip kind of goes along with that. As you save those camera views, you want to make sure that you keep them labeled. So labeling your camera views is going to be really important, especially as you start getting a whole bunch in here so you know where they are. So in this case, for example, I would go into the scene section of my tray. And uh, if you don't see that, you just want to go to window, default tray, and click the option for scenes and we're going to go in here and you can see how there's a little thumbnail of each one of these and you could name this something like northwest view the second one you could save as southwest view i have no idea if those directions would actually line up in this case um, third one you could call this dining room you can see how I'm adjusting these down here in the name box and you can see how those are adjusting up here as well. So as you change their name, those are going to get adjusted up here. That way you can actually find the views that you're looking for when you get a big long list of views up above. So tip three is something that um, that's going to get really important as you're working with a model like this one that has both exterior and interior and that's which tools you use in order to move around so for example whenever you're in the outside whenever you're outside of a building like this you're going to want to use the orbit tool so the orbit tool is going to allow you to fly around this building so it's really good for exterior views however once you start getting into interior views like let's go back to the dining room view you can see how as you orbit um, sometimes it works okay, sometimes you fly through a lot of walls and you don't really get that fine control that you want. Well, what you can do instead is you can use the first person camera tools which are contained in the large tool set. And if you don't see that, just right click up in here, make sure the box for large tool set is checked. And if you don't wanna do that, you can also right click in here and just click on camera and find the camera toolbar. But that's gonna have a couple different tools in here that you're gonna to wanna to use when you're working with interiors. So the first is gonna be the look around. So what the look around is gonna do is that's gonna allow you to pivot the camera view around your fixed point. So whatever point you're in right here, um, that's gonna allow you, you've got your center point right here and as you click and drag, your actual location in the world isn't gonna move, move, just what you're looking at is gonna move. So that's gonna be really valuable. And actually, there's another tool in here that I'm I'm using that isn't contained in the first person camera tools that's the pan tool 
and uh, you can find that you can find that either by clicking on the hand and then clicking and dragging or you can also hold the shift key and click and drag your middle mouse button and you can see how that lets me move left and right within my model so that's really helpful for moving around inside so there's also a tool called the walk tool that allows you to move around in your model without passing through the walls so you can use the walk around tool as well to move around. You can see how as I click, I can move my and hold my mouse button down, I can move my mouse forward and backward. That one can get a little tricky because it kind of jumps around a little bit. So you can use that. You're probably not going to use it a whole lot. But in this case, what I'm going to say, but in this case, there is a tool in here, and you know what, we'll talk about this in a second, called the Position Camera Tool. So all of these are gonna be valuable. You're especially gonna use the look around and you're gonna pan a lot. Um, but, so another trick I wanna talk about is it can be really difficult to get your camera into some of these tight spaces. Well, what you can do is you can actually use a little workaround and you can use the section plane tool in order to set your camera view. So let's say for example that I wanted to get into this upstairs bedroom. Well, what I could do is I could place a section plane in here temporarily so that I could get in here and I could place my camera and set up my camera view. And uh, then I could save that view. So that's, that's just kind of a quick workaround is once you get into that space, you could then delete or turn off your section plane. But in this case, let's say for example that I wanted to get into this space, what I would use is I would use the position camera tool. That is a great tool for setting where your camera is going to be. And so all you're gonna do to do that is you're just gonna click on the position camera person, then you're gonna click on a point. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna turn your camera on and that's gonna put you in this actual location. So you can see how my camera is centered over that point. And you can see how it automatically drops me in with the eye tool active so that I can look around. And now that I'm in here, especially in SketchUp 2018 and beyond, you can go into the outliner and you can find that section plane and you can either turn off the act active cut or you can delete it. So you can see how now I'm in this bedroom and I can look around and I can then save a view. I can just add that view. And now I can get back to it really quickly. And so the next tip is gonna to be to change the field of view of your camera. So what the field of view does is that allows you to see more from this location. So let's say for example that I wanna see more of this room. You can see how right now I can't see a whole lot of what's going on in this room. I'm just kinda of stuck in this corner right here. Well, what you could do is you could click on the zoom tool and then if you look down in the lower right hand corner, you'll notice there's an option for field of view. And if you hold your shift key and click and drag, you can see how I can make the field of view of my camera larger. And one thing you may notice when you do this is you can definitely see more when you do this, but you have to be careful not to get too much distortion. And so usually I try to not take that much over 75, maybe 80, because everything starts looking really distorted. But you can see how that allows you to see a lot more of this room. And another thing to note is you can actually save that field of view inside your camera view. So if I right click and I was to update this view, Now if I go to my northwest view, this takes my camera field of view back to what it was, but then if I click on this scene four, you can kind of see the field of view adjust and that gets saved in here. So that's something you can save with whatever your space is or whatever your camera view is that you've set in this space. And so then the last tip I want to talk about, because this video is starting to get a little bit long, is you can also set what you're looking at with the position camera tool. So. If you remember what I did before is I just came in here and I kind of clicked and when I clicked I just came in here and I kind of clicked to set a camera view well you can also click and drag in order to set what you're looking at from that point so you can see how in this case I was able to click on that and drag and now I'm looking up here and then you can adjust your height just by panning or you could also type in a value for a new height but this basically allows you to come in here and just set what your camera is going to be looking at really quickly without having to mess around with the look around tool or anything like that.
So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Were these helpful to you? Did you know about all of them? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.